I think the family wants to see a strong commitment, a strong case made for the George Floyd Justice and Policing Bill. I think that uh, uh, the family understands that the conviction of Derek Chauvin uh, represents an uh, important moment for justice and accountability, but that for the many other victims and the many other victims to be, uh, you're going to have a, uh, uh, a need for there to be a strong, if you will, tool in the toolbox of the Department of Justice to hold police officers accountable, as well as to push police departments and law enforcement across the nation to change the culture of policing, to change the practices of policing, to change the methodology of policing, so that we can rebuild chef trust between communities and law enforcement. We need a whole new paradigm when it comes to it. And I think the family and the families of uh, the victims of police violence want to see uh, a strong national policy response. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is that response. You know, right after the verdict, we were watching the polls, and people on the left and the right, Republicans, Democrats, seem to believe justice had, has been served. But, Mark, that's changed. The, the, the more recent polling on Republicans suggests not everybody thinks that it went the way it should, and you wonder, will there be pushback? Is, is there a way for the president tonight to get everybody behind this bill so that we can have some bipartisan action on something? So I think bipartisanship is something that is an important uh, method to achieve a good bill, Shep. What I think people want is a bill. They want an accomplishment. And while it would be better to achieve it through a bipartisan means, it's the result that counts. It's the mm. response that counts. I feel that if members of the Senate who may not be uh, in favor of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act would just spend some time with the families of the victims of police violence, if they would just look into their eyes and hear and understand their pain and understand how violence is tearing communities apart. And this is about trying to rebuild trust. Trust comes with accountability. Trust comes with improved professionalism. And I do think that members of the Senate uh, or anyone in America who, uh, who may not think that... Uh, uh, that uh, there's a need for the George Floyd bill, who, or who may not think that the trial went the way they wanted, should hear the victims. I mean, we've got families in pain. Can you imagine losing your loved one to any kind of violence, mm -hmm. much less violence at the hands of people who wear a uniform, wear a badge, and who had a duty to protect us? Mark, Senator Tim Scott giving the Republican response tonight, as we mentioned. He's leading negotiations on a possible compromise on police reform. C could he be the one who helps, you know, bring this together and get it done? Senator Scott's got, uh, I think, uh, an opportunity to play a very important uh, historic role. And I know he's had his sleeves rolled up in discussions with uh, Senator Cory Booker and Congresswoman, uh, 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 if you will, Karen Bass, and a number of others. And so this is a moment for Tim Scott, whether he can bridge the divide, whether we can get a substantive bill. Here's what I'll say, Shep. Uh, compromise, yes. Lipstick on a pig, no. Mm. And by that, I mean we have to have a bill of substance that addresses qualified immunity and its absurdities. We've got to have a bill that ensures that there is transparency so that police departments across the nation know when bad officers are trying to jump from one jurisdiction to the other. We've got to ensure that choke holes and no-knock warrants and some of these practices that are unnecessary and extreme are absolutely banned. Uh, we've got to ensure that there's an accreditation system, national standards for policing. We have it for hospitals. We have it for colleges and universities. We need it for policing. The George Floyd bill does all of the above. And I think while there's always room to find a way to put this together, the most important thing is we need a bill that does something. And we also have to recognize that simply a national, uh, a piece of national legislation alone will not fix this problem. It's going to require work at the local level, which is why 
the National Urban League has issued a, uh, if you will, our 21 pillars for reimagining and re-envisioning police so that local mayors, local council uh, persons, county executives, people at the local level, community leaders and activists have, if you will, the tools that they need to say, let's change uh, law enforcement here on the local level, while at the same time we have, if you will, a national tool, an additional tool, if you will, to ensure accountability, re-envisioning, re-imagination, and reform. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.